and hello YouTube this is GS Mount Smart and in today's video we're going to teach you how to use Photoshop to select colors or a range of colors and then change that selection to any color you want using a hue saturation adjustment layer and some layer masking techniques that's coming up next What's up guys, GS Now Smart here today with another brand new video for tutorials with GS. I want to welcome you back to another video. Glad to have you. Great video today. If you have been new to the channel, new to any of my tutorial videos, I want to welcome you as well and I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. Plenty of other tutorial videos on the channel regarding Photoshop, video editing, audio editing, Audition, Premiere Pro, Audacity, GIMP, all kinds of cool stuff. So if you're interested in software and creating things, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as that post notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the most recent videos. So here I have a picture that I got from Google. It's a stock photo. And as you can see, the majority of our picture is red here. Now, if you have a picture that you took or you got from the internet, but you want to change an object in your picture, you want to change an entire range of colors in an image, it's actually fairly easy to do in Photoshop. Now, there is a tool that allows you to do this very quickly. If you go up to Image and Adjustments, and I believe it's called Replace Color, you can do it this way, and it does work fairly well. However, you always want to be working in layers, so you're doing non-destructive editing. And this can be a bit finicky as well with some of the hues and the saturations down here. And it's a bit more complicated to work through. However, if you want to do non-destructive editing, you can do this very similar uh, technique with layer masking and hue and saturation layers, which I'm going to be showing you how to do today. So the first step we want to do is go to create a new layer. So go up to the layer, new, new layer. We can go ahead and press OK on that. Then we're going to have to select and we're going to select color range. And this is the first step. We want to find out a range of colors we want to select. So for the most part, your fuzziness might be really high or might be really low. For the most part, you want to keep your fuzziness at around maybe 70, 60, 50 around here in this area here. Uh, it depends on what type of picture you have, but let's just keep it up for 100 right now, or let's keep it up fairly high here. And what you can do is you can select a range of colors from the drop down menu here. So if you want to have all of your uh, purples, or all of your greens, or all of your reds. As you can see, it does a pretty good job at selecting uh, the colors. However, you can also use your sampled colors. So you can use your eyedropper tools here. You have three eyedropper tools here. You have one eyedropper tool here, a plus eyedropper, and a minus eyedropper. Here you also have several selection views. You can view it in grayscale. And this sort of helps you visualize everything that's white is being selected, everything that's black is not being selected. You also have several other views to see what you're selecting and what you're not selecting. The two best ones I think are white matte and grayscale. I like working on grayscale though. So I think we're gonna go ahead and use that after we select some colors. So we're going to go ahead and grab our eyedropper tool here. And for the most part, we want to select a red that's fairly prominent. So I think this red is fairly prominent right around here, um, right there. Then we're going to go ahead and grab our plus button. And if you go ahead and switch to grayscale, you can see what you're selecting. Uh, we, are, we were selecting a good amount of red, but we're not selecting all the reds. You can see in the corner over here, these hills are not selected. There's also a few shades of red in our tree here that are not selected. So sometimes you will have to use the plus eyedropper tool and just select a few more colors here that could work. We're going to go ahead and select these hills in the background here as well. And you can keep on pressing uh, with the plus eyedropper tool as many times as you want. And you'll soon be selecting all the reds in this image. Now what you'll see this fuzziness tool here, this basically refines your selection. So think of it like a type of slider that begins to widen your color range wider and wider and wider until you start selecting almost everything. Essentially you want to have uh, the majority of what you don't want selected black and what you do want selected white. So having your fuzziness be like right on here is not that great because you're selecting some of the clouds here. So you want to bring it down just enough so that we're not taking away too much, but we're getting rid of the white that's getting selected in our clouds here. And if we go to grayscale, you can see that we're pretty much selecting everything. Maybe that little hill over there we want to select as well. I can see Grace does a really good job at showing you what you need to select and what you don't need to select. Once you have a selection though, you go and press OK, and a selection will be created around this image like so. Now, 
if you happen to be select now if you happen to select something by accident like somebody's flowers might be selected you can always go back up to select go to color range again and then you can uh, use the minus to actually deselect certain things so as you can see I just deselected something but we're gonna go ahead and just control Z that because it's not really necessary so you can refine your selection if you ever need to do that and let me just make sure the edges of this tree are selected as well which looks like they are not that one was not it okay there we go that's pretty good so we're gonna press okay now then we can go to layer once more go to new adjustment layer and we can click hue saturation go press okay here and now you'll notice as we change our slider here the hue and saturation of the tree and of the grass will change depending on what we want so if we want to make this a bit more greener uh you can see now we're making it a bit more greener here and it looks like the tree and the grass is natural color. Now, like I said, if you feel like uh, you're still missing a few colors, like you can see in the corner over there, 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 there's like hints of red. You can always go back to your color range selection and refine that selection. So that's basically how you easily and quickly change colors. Now, what happens if, for example, you don't want to include this tree? Say you want to keep this tree red and you want to keep the grass here green, though. The reason why it takes an extra step is because when you're selecting a range of colors, it's selecting everything that's red in the image. You're not selecting, oh, I only want to select the grass but not the tree. It automatically selects everything that's red. So to avoid that problem, it's very, easily to, it's very easy to refine this. All you have to do is select your layer mask here. And this is your layer mask, the one with the black and white. Uh, areas here go and hold down the alt key or the option key on mac go and select it and you'll see that it selects your layer mask here and then what you can do is you can grab your brush tool make sure you have brush here make sure you have your foreground as black and remember what i told you earlier that everything that's selected is going to be white everything that's not selected is going to be black so this is a great way to also refine your selection if you see there are hints of uh, red that are peeking through the sky you can color over the sky here and if you actually want to change a part of the tree here and as you can see our uh, our opacity here is a bit low let's go ahead and put this to 100 as you can see when we color over this tree here if we go ahead and select here you'll see that as we color through whatever is turned black is going to go back to its original color so that's kind of the idea with the brush tool here is that if you ever find something that's if you ever find something that's color that you don't want colored, you can very easily change that with the brush tool. And when you come down here to this section here, you could change the opacity a bit or the uh, feathering of your brush. You can also use your bracket tools to change the size of this brush to refine it uh, section by section here and just carefully go over it like so. And then when we go back over here, you'll see that it actually looks a lot better now. Uh, if you want to go a bit more in detail, you can get rid of these green leaves as well. But from far away, you won't really notice a difference. And now, as you can see, this is the before and this is the after. We have our grass green and we have our heart tree red as it was before. So that pretty much covers everything on how to select different colors in an image and to replace those color or change those colors in an image with layers, layer mask, and adjustment layers using the hue and saturation effect. If you liked the video, go ahead and leave a like. Any questions, comments, suggestions, confusions, anything you want to say, go and leave in the comments section down below. I'll be down there answering your questions and talking to you guys as usual. And if you haven't subscribed, I encourage you to subscribe. Plenty of other Photoshop tutorials. If you want to check out my most recent video, click the annotation here. Want to check out a similar video, click the annotation here. Want to subscribe to my gaming, vlogging, other channels, the annotations here. And if you want to donate a dollar to my Patreon page, you can click the annotation here. That's pretty much it, guys. Thank you for watching. As always, this is GSM Smart, and I'll be back. Certainly think, don't go anywhere.